All right, let's install them. Your frame may be, may have some more things on it. This is essentially like your frame. The A motor. put on the A side idler. You don't need to have the idler bearings on here. It is just for show. Install the other side. All right, now we have all the mounting points on. Slide the shafts in. I hope you kept those loose so you can actually do this. Um, but yeah, slide the shafts in. Take your X axis, orient it so it's facing the front. get the shaft through the bearing and then slide it into the the mount into um, the retainer on the mount uh, the motor mount you can actually use your thumb and then push on it um, you're gonna get get some leverage over here uh, let me show uh, get some leverage on the frame and then use your thumb to push the shaft until it clicks into here fully, like so. And then the other side, move my hand so you can actually see what I'm doing. It's slightly trickier. You don't want to misalign it, but we are in. Um, before you can actually get this in there, you will need to loosen and at some point I'm going to stop bumping the phone slash camera um, you'll need to loosen these so you can move the shafts, but the shafts back and forth and um, figure out what your spacing is And same trick as before, get some leverage here, get your thumb, and push the shaft all the way into its um, home on the motor mount. So um, the Y shafts are now fully in this way, so we can tighten them so they don't come out when we do other adjustments. Obviously, always remember this is plastic. No matter what plastic it is, unless you printed your stuff out of polycarbonate, um, which is pretty awesome. But it's not as impact resistant as EBS is. So, I'm going to fix the racking issue, which is basically caused by the fact that the these shafts are not in the right amount. Take these out for now, so it'll just slide out, and I lose them. Do, 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 do. I think that's pretty good. All right, Gotta tighten these now. Gantry is deracked and found its home.
All right, so it's on here. This might be a little tight right now. When we tighten these bolts, it actually spreads this out and matches the distance that's set on uh, between these two bearings. So it kind of crunchy and sticky right now. When we tighten these, these will find its place in life. Pretty good. All right, now we need to figure out how much these y-axis is racked. And to do so, we are gonna use an alignment tool. So we're ready to align this piece. Um, basically what we want is for the distance between here and here to be the same on this side and this side, which means that, um, and should be the same on the other side, or it has to be equal on both sides. If the y-axis is a little bit like this, we can adjust for it in um, our bed leveling. But if the y-axis is not level, or is leveled differently on both sides, it's basically going to cause a slight twist. Uh, it may be like a 0.1 millimeter on one side, but it does throw all of the geometry off completely. So allowing, having adjustment points over here allows you to basically make sure that the two y-axes are perpendicular to each other. And we're going to use a frame to make sure that they're perpendicular because um, frame is essentially your point of reference for the z-axis as well. So essentially we're using frame as the frame of reference. Uh, uh, it's getting pretty late, so sorry guys. Um, all right, alignment tool. So this is just some plastic that can snap into the XY joint and uh, allows you to get a uh, point of reference between um, this piece and the frame because otherwise you're kind of stuck using, I don't know, a ruler. Not super precise what we're talking about, the precision we're talking about. What you really want is something like this with the dial gauge, dial indicator, but not everybody wants to spend 40 bucks or $400 on a good dial indicator. So we're gonna use the tried and true method of a piece of paper. Um, thumb wheel is, thumb screw is completely optional. You can just use a regular M3 screw. Um, so what it does is it slides onto the X carriage, and you kinda wanna probably undo this a little bit. Um, slides onto the X, Y joint and slots, there's a little slot on here, it slots into where the dowel pin would go. And then you can use a regular nut, or in my case, a fancy thumb screw to essentially make sure this is all one thing. And you wanna loosen these enough to where it moves up and down with quite a bit of pressure. You don't really want it to be holding it with your thumb all the time. So now that we have a point of reference, let's take a piece of paper, slide it on here, and without applying too much pressure downwards, just sort of Find there we go, that's biting here. So this is your feeler gauge essentially. Same thing you're doing when you're adjusting the hot end. So it's biting here, and when we slide it on this end, it's not really biting here anymore, which means this needs to come down a little bit. So you can basically pull it down. Yeah, that's too far. 
bring them back up a bit. That's perfect. Check on the front again. Here. It's not good here anymore. So a little bit of pressure on the excess. I mean in the upward direction. Perfect. Now we're going to gently tighten this. Let's just double check, make sure it didn't walk out on us. Yeah, perfect. All right, that's fully tightened. Triple check the distance. Did walk out on us you basically have it you feel it not touching here but when it moves here it's touching the frame By the way, you hear this? Touch here, touch here. That is imperfections in the aluminum extrusion and um, can't really get linear shaft precision out of aluminum extrusions. Um, for the most part, it doesn't really matter but when you're trying to get precision out of your machine using aluminum extrusions for motion will give you mixed results. All right, so this side is done. So we can actually take our pin, put the bearing, the other bearing, and then a spacer between them, another bearing, and another bearing. And then we can just slot this bad boy in here. It's hard to see when the camera's in front of you. Um, just keep it in with your finger so it doesn't fall out as you tighten this and how tight should these should these be when you hear cracking you've gone too far all right that's retained in there which means these aren't moving anywhere uh, rinse repeat for the other side X axis.
fun.